Hey good people, Batavia here. We have a garden tour. We made it to August. We're gonna take a look at what's growing in the front yard garden and the backyard garden. We're gonna talk about some things that are struggling along the way and then some things that are really doing well. So we're at the very beginning of our pole bean harvest. I have scarlet runner beans in the front yard. There's some asparagus long beans and then I also have in the backyard some Kentucky Wonder. So I've been able to enjoy a few beans here and there, but not enough to can just yet, which is one of the goals. I either have a really, really great cucumber year or an off year. And this clearly seems to be an off year, but I have enjoyed some cucumbers and a tomato cucumber salad, which is also nice. No pickling of cucumbers to make pickles just yet. Red Baron, new bell pepper to me, which is thriving in this container. I have this a plant like this planted in other spaces in the garden. It's not doing as well, um, but we're still undecided about whether or not we want to grow that particular pepper plant going forward. This is the beginning of the squash, the summer squash. Uh, you know, it's been a struggle in containers for me, so I may switch to only growing them in raised beds. Before I flip this bed, I wanted to share with y'all the first cabbage we planted out in the spring. They went in on April the 15th as transplants that I picked up from the store. And then I am harvesting, this is a couple of weeks ago, at the very end of July. And so that's about right. I don't know the variety, so I don't have the recommended number of days from plant to harvest. But I generally felt good about, you know, definitely firm enough, the size seemed like it was done. Uh, so I was able to get those in the crisper until I was able to work with them. Strawberries, two things to note. I will be planting those runners, but then I also want to decide over the winter whether or not I want to go all in on strawberries or if I want to continue to have maybe a dozen, 15 plants and enjoy a few strawberries here and there. All in would be like growing enough to produce jams and things of that nature. So I have the first eggplant, a Whopper eggplant. I have a couple of other eggplants in the bed on the far end of the garden, but I haven't uh, had them produced just yet. And I am still handpicking Japanese beetles. They seem to be on the downward slope when it comes to how many I'm seeing a day and the damage I'm seeing. So kale is one of those things. There are a handful of crops that generally prefer cooler weather that I've learned over the years, but I'm still able to grow them throughout the summer. And while there definitely is an argument to be made about, you know, which time of year they taste better, I still enjoy it throughout the summer and I had to come back in and harvest all of that, you know, those outer leaves because that plant is really thriving. Oh, I was checking to see if there was uh, aphid damage on those leaves because that's normally a challenge I have kind of midsummer when growing things like kale. So look, an itty bitty potato. <laughs> uh, but it gets better, don't worry. This is a take on the roof stout method and I just basically put the seed potatoes on the soil and then put probably about eight inches of straw on top and um, before I put the straw on I did fertilize with a granular fertilizer and bone meal. Um, but so far so good. I'm hoping this could be the way that I actually grow potatoes going forward. This is the beginning of the small okra. These plants aren't meant to be small, so I'm hoping they continue to grow a bit and produce more okra. The Triple Delight's new to me. Um, it's supposed to produce three color peppers, yellow, green, and red, all on the same plant. And I have a bunch of California Wonder Peppers because I plan on making as much of my favorite tomato sauce that I freeze as I can with my Romas and my sweet bell peppers. So a couple of videos ago, I asked about spooning your onions and then topping them off. I didn't top off the greens, but I did come back in and spoon. And I'm just coming in because we we're expecting rain in about 30 minutes and I wanted to get any of these onions where the neck had been bent, where I knew that they were basically done growing. Um, so I did leave about half of them in place. 
and then I want to store the rest. Even though they're small, it still works out generally for the type of cooking that I do. I don't always need the Whopper size onion, although that's probably still a goal of mine. <laughs> uh, so we also discussed, well, I said, you know, whether or not I was going to protect these tomatoes and take some measures. And I did come back in. This netting is not as secure as some of the other things I do in the garden to protect the tomatoes against the squirrels. But so far, so good. I didn't notice it while I was filming, but I did see later that that uh, big boy tomato, some of the stem, the branches started to split. And so I harvested the first couple of tomatoes that were really blushing and then I tied up the branch. Other than that, I have what I thought was a mortgage lifter, but it's the mystery tomato, which we'll talk about more on a future video. It's a seed situation from some years back. And then I have the Paul Robeson and then Roma in that bed. Oh yeah, asparagus bean. I decided that I really do enjoy this bean. I just have to harvest it at the perfect time for my taste. It's not here, it's a little bit bigger, but it's definitely not when it gets like a full yard and, and kind of wide. That's a little bit too mature for my taste. Question mark, I mean, I think this is a mortgage lifter. At this point, I can't trust myself with my labeling and seed starting when it comes to some of these. I just wanna spend a second on my melon. So that's a watermelon, and on the other side I have honeydew and cantaloupe that are planted. It's the first week of August. I don't have any melons that have produced yet. So I'm not very hopeful around actually growing and harvesting sweet melons this year. I'm adding it to the better luck next year column. But I feel really good about my corn so far this year. So this was sown on June the 5th. And this video is, let's see, it's August the 5th. Um, and so great progress. The next couple of days, I ended up seeing tassels formed. And so this is definitely later, intentionally later than the corn I have in the backyard, which we'll see in a sec. But yeah, there's um, more of the yard long beans. I think on that side of the trellis, it's uh, their volunteers where I intentionally planted that first set. And here is the last of the spring cabbage. I had trouble with um, cabbage moss on these particular plants earlier in the year, so I covered it with tulle fabric. Now talk about volunteers that just make you smile. There are actually potatoes underneath in that bed, and I do need to dig those out. It's probably maybe a week past when uh, would have been optimal, but I'm sure they'll be fine. That's where I have more of the red and then the purple Viking potatoes. So for the cage baby, we're just gonna sh highlight the first bed and I wanted to share what I was growing. All of that that you see is tape where I'm trying to repair holes in the tool fabric. I've mentioned before it's just so super delicate. It gets the job done but once you have a hole if the moth gets through there you're right back where you started. Mm-hmm. Hornworms. This is the third plant that I found either hornworm damage or the actual worms themselves. Uh, but I've been able to keep an eye on them and then still continue to harvest. This is the first set of Romas from the garden. Uh, I have the Roma up front that we saw in that container. And then there's one in the bed on the far end. Oh, before I get past it, again, clearly where squash go to die. I have them sitting here so I can basically share that with you and then I'm going to toss two of those three for sure. So my notes as I kind of all, I'm always preparing for next year as well, plant more bush beans. They're the first to produce. They don't have as much work to get to production as pole beans do, but to really get a sizable harvest, you just need to plant more plants. So that's going to be my goal next year. I, I, I was speaking talking about beans and I missed more red potatoes. So we were waiting on those plants to completely die back. And here is more of that hornworm damage that I mentioned. So my favorite thing to grow in containers, and I'm always trying different things in containers. I'm just so intrigued by it. Um, but my favorite hands down is peppers. These plants look a little bit 
scraggly, um, but they are doing well, generally speaking. And then I have my wall of containers where, you know, these are either four or five gallon buckets. Shishito peppers. I've been really trying to get to these before they start to turn red because I do want to try the blistering of the shishito peppers, everyone. Um, says it's just so delicious. That was a habanero, which I'm not going to eat, but I have some ideas about some recipes to make with them to gift them. And then I have poblano, and then that was chocolate beauty. And then the long Aldi pepper that was green there, which I saved seeds from a pepper I bought in Aldi's you know, many years ago. And that yellow was a banana pepper. So I'm super pleased with the move to grow peppers and tomatoes in this space. I was a bit nervous about it earlier on only because it's sitting on top of concrete. So in the years past where I've grown tomatoes, like you have access to other soil, right? You know, um, you, you can find nutrients as a tomato plant if you need to. At this point, this bed is all it has, right? You know, and it's about probably at this stage in the season, eight inches of soil. But what I did when I first started the season, I added manure, uh, excuse me, I added compost. The brand is manure, M-O-O-N-U-R-E. And then I fertilize using an all-purpose fertilizer when I plant it. And I don't normally do this, but I was being very intentional about what was going on in this bed. So I came back in maybe about six weeks after I planted and top dressed with granular fertilizer. Um, I just scratched it in at the plant, base of the plant, and then watered. And all in all, I've come in and pruned probably three or four times over the course of the season. And I just couldn't be more pleased. We have one of my favorites, pineapple. Tomato makes the best salsa in my opinion. I have sweet potatoes, white potatoes, and then more short okra. <laughs> um, this setup, I'm super pleased with as well. This is PVC pipe, and then it's like that string netting that you'll see in the garden centers. And it's definitely doing the job for those pole beans. And my white violet, excuse me, wild violet corn. It's, uh, it's almost time. So the cherry tomato plant was the third plant that had damage from hornworms. Um, I probably picked three or four of hornworms off of this plant. The plant was sickly to begin with, um, but it's producing. I ate about half of these, so some of them had split. So I ate about half of them that afternoon. And then the rest is here. This is the harvest from that weekend. Uh, I couldn't be happier. I thank you for spending some time with me. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them below. And I look forward to seeing y'all on the next one.